Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the total superheat charging method versus just measuring superheat at your indoor coil. So a lot of times I'm getting asked, why aren't we just checking superheat? Why are we checking what's called total superheat? And I'm going to be explaining that in this video. First of all, the total superheat charging method is used to check the charge of systems with a fixed orifice, such as a piston, and this right here is a piston chamber. This right here is capillary tubing, and these are both referred to as fixed orifices. If our system had a thermostatic expansion valve like this, then we would be checking the refrigerant charge with the subcoin method, with the pressure converted to saturated temperature and also an actual temperature measurement on the line right here. But since our unit has a fixed orifice, we're going to check it at the available pressure port right here at the outdoor unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a temperature measurement right on this suction line, which is also known as the vapor line. It's also known as the low side of the system while the system is running. We're going to take the temperature on the line here, which is going to give us the temperature of the refrigerant running through the line right here. And we're going to subtract the saturated temperature from this gauge. So you got to remember when we're measuring the pressure right here, we're actually measuring the pressure in the middle of this coil. So we take this pressure and say it was R410A refrigerant. And if it was R410A refrigerant, we can take this pressure up on this outer ring and say this needle right here moved up to say 120 PSIG. We bring that into the R410A inner ring and that's the saturated temperature. And we read right about 40, 41 degrees as a saturated temperature. And that would mean it's in the middle of this coil. So remember that saturated means liquid and vapor both exist at the same time and saturated refrigerant is found in the middle of this coil. So if this was 41 degrees and say right on the line here this was 51 degrees, you take 51 degrees minus 41 and you're left with 10 degrees of total superheat. It's always called total superheat when you measure at the outdoor unit because you're taking into account any change in the superheat coming from this evaporator coil right here from after where it exits the coil until it makes it over here. So maybe it goes through an attic and maybe you are increasing the superheat before it comes out here over to the outdoor unit and enters into the compressor or maybe this suction line is running into the ground and so between your evaporator coil here and your outdoor unit it's actually giving up some of its superheat. And so that's why this is called the total superheat method right here when you're checking it at the outdoor unit. Just to briefly touch on what superheat is, when the refrigerant comes out of this outdoor unit, it's a subcooled liquid, which means it's a, a liquid that has lowered in temperature after it's, it's completely changed into that liquid state. So you have your liquid coming over here. It's called a subcooled liquid, and it's hitting the metering device. So it comes into this metering device as a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant, and then it comes through this pressure reduction, it's a restriction, it's also called the expansion valve, and it allows the refrigerant to lower in pressure and for the refrigerant it allows it to expand because it's coming into this coil right here and you have a lot more available space compared to in this one line right here. So you're lowering in pressure and you're expanding into a, into a saturated state and it comes into this coil as saturated, which means that both exist at the same time. And then as it comes up through this coil, as the air is passing across this coil right here, it's changing from saturated refrigerant into a vapor. So maybe when it comes through the metering device, it turns into, say, 80% liquid, 20% flash gas. And then by the time it's up here, it's reversed. It's like, say, maybe 80% gas and 20% liquid. And by the time it comes up to here, as the refrigerant traveling through the tubing is absorbing the heat that of the air going across the coil, it's turning into a complete vapor refrigerant. Once it turns into a complete vapor refrigerant, the temperature increase between where it first comes out of the saturated state and where it exits the evaporator coil at right here, that is called the superheat. So it's any increase in the vapor refrigerant's temperature between, say, right here and right here where it exits the coil box at. So that is what's called superheat. By the time this vapor refrigerant ends up over here, when we were checking the, the superheat over here, it's called total superheat because it has to take into account any change in the superheat from here to here. So why do we check that? Why do we check it over here? It seems like it would be more accurate if we checked it over here. 
Reason number one is you usually do not have a vapor port right on the outside of the evaporator coil box in order to check your superheat. So you would need a pressure port in order to convert the pressure to saturated temperature, and then you would take your line temp in order to, to determine what your superheat is. However, you don't need to have a, a port right here. You could remove the cover of the evaporator coil, and if you know that the refrigerant exits this metering device as a saturated refrigerant, as soon as it comes into this evaporator coil, you could just go ahead and take a temperature measurement right on the, the tube right here. And so you could take that with a bead type temp sensor like this and then just put the, uh, the quill box cover on and then you could take another measurement right here on your vapor line and that would give you your superheat. The reason a lot of people don't do that is just the time it takes to remove the cover box, locate a spot in order to find the saturated state in the evaporator quill. A lot of people aren't comfortable with determining where the saturated state is. A lot of times there's more jogs in the uh, in the evaporator coil tubing. This is pretty straightforward. You can see that the refrigerant enters here and it exits right up here. It's pretty, pretty simple. But other coils have a lot more jogs in them. But that's a reason why people don't check the, the superheat here. It's just very time consuming. So that would be the second reason. So first reason is a lot of times you don't have a port. Second reason is you could remove the coil box cover and just take your temperature measurements, but that's time consuming. Reason number three is we need to check the total superheat at the outdoor unit anyway. And the reason for that is a lot of these outdoor units do not come with an accumulator tank. An accumulator tank is the only protection device that the compressor would have. And so uh, unless this is a heat pump or unless this is installed in a dry climate with an accumulator already, there's usually not one installed and we need to make sure that the compressor has superheated refrigerant entering it. If we measure total superheat here, we know that the refrigerant is completely in the vapor state as it goes through this tube, through the service valve and directly into that vapor compressor. If we have any liquid entering into that vapor compressor, it's going to damage it. So if we were reading no total superheat here, then that would be a problem. So even though you may have superheat here, by the time the tubing and the refrigerant gets over to here, the refrigerant may have gave, given up its superheat into the ground. So if this tubing was buried in the ground and then there was water surrounding it, it could have lost its superheat. And that would be dangerous for this compressor. In the case where you have an accumulator tank such as this right here, and I have a whole other video explaining the accumulator tank and its purpose, but it's a compressor protection device and a liquid refrigerant storage device. But basically what's happening is the refrigerant's coming in here and it's dumping, say the saturated refrigerant into this tank, or if it is superheated refrigerant, it's dumping it into the tank. And then this tube is picking up the vapor at the top of the tank. It's coming through here, picking up any liquid that's in the bottom of this tank and coming up to here, it's pulling in some more vapor, helping this the oil and small amount of liquid refrigerant that's entering in this tube, it's allowing it to vaporize before it goes right into the compressor. So that's what the accumulator tank's purpose is. And most standard systems that are single speed or two speed, air conditioners only don't have that accumulator tank. So it's therefore that's the third reason why we check total superheat is to make sure that the compressor is safe. The fourth reason is that the total superheat and the superheat are normally very close within say a degree of each other unless this vapor line is extremely long or there's some type of uh, pressure change between here and here or maybe this, this tubing right here is running through the ground. You know, that's the exceptions, but in most cases, the superheat here is gonna be extremely close to the total superheat here, and that's why we set the, the refrigerant charge for a fixed orifice system with the total superheat method. And so it's just a one-stop shop, basically, and that's why we're measuring it at the outdoor unit. Now, there are a few circumstances in which you may want to check the superheat at the indoor coil. And this is one right here. This coil came out of a, a high velocity system and it has a thermostatic expansion valve with an adjustable stem. And it has an additional pressure port right here to check and adjust the, the superheat with. Other times you may be troubleshooting a system and maybe you read a normal to say high superheat out here and the system's just running, running, running. Maybe you wanna check the temperature on this line here to see if there's a difference between here and where it enters the outdoor unit at here just to see if there's some type of uh, pressure change or there's some type of other issue going on.
If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and preparing a system for refrigerant all the way through to advanced things like troubleshooting and troubleshooting low airflow problems, you can check out our book. We have the full outline available over at our website at acservicetech.com. We've also developed a thousand question workbook to go along with the book to test your knowledge. And we also provide a self-study answer key as well. So you can go ahead and test your knowledge with that. And we also have quick reference polystyrene cards. So these, these cards will hold up real well. And so you can check the refrigerant charge uh, with the total superheat method or the subcoing method, check delta T. You have the PT chart. You also have refrigerant weights, a troubleshooting guide, and also a walkthrough if you have a frozen evaporator coil. So you can check these out over at our website at acservicetech.com. And we also have these available over at amazon.com. All of our physical products are available over at our website at acservicetech.com. They're also available over at amazon.com. Make sure to check out our ebook and also our Spanish ebook available at our website and also on Google Play. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.